Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. I'm your host, Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing agents who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience experience. Every week, my co-host Melissa Wallace and I will provide you with my team's unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined live and in studio by the one and only Sharon McNamara, broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. She's just in the other room. She's going to sneak in a minute. But we are also joined virtually today by Jasmine Glasgow, who is the broker owner of Maritime Mortgage. Hi, Jasmine. Hello, hello. Nice to be with you virtually. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person today. I know. It's a little sad. (laughs) I'm missing your faces, but I'm going to a museum today, and it's about an hour and a half away from my house, and that requires me starting from my house. I know. What museum? I'm going to one in Haverhill. I didn't do any research for it. I didn't know it existed, but apparently there's a castle, there's a walk around it, and then there's a museum. What? I know. I'm excited. I've lived in Massachusetts my whole life, and yet I've done so few of the touristy things. Yeah, I know. I feel like we need to, like, that's why um, Kristen Howlett, who's a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, her and I do a show once a month every Tuesday, or um, every, uh, once a month uh, on a Tuesday night, and we highlight highlight um a town in massachusetts a a community in massachusetts and we've been learning so much like there's so much to do in the places that we live that like we we don't know we we have to learn to appreciate it more but i love that you're exploring and and going to a new um place you'll have to let me know how it is because i love castles and i love all that stuff (laughs) i'll be sure to report back i'm super excited and i'm really really excited about this topic as you know i'm a super big geek when it comes to credit scores so you are excited about this morning (laughs) But we appreciate that about you. Um, And I feel like when it comes to. Yeah, big well, I'm excited about geek. this morning. Yeah, <laughs> but we um, appreciate oh, that I about you. A, getting, um, and uh, I sorry. feedback there. Um, so, Jasmine, why don't you um, take a moment to reintroduce yourselves because you've been on your uh, you've been on our show several times, but reintroduce yourself to all of our listeners. Who are you? What do you do? Where do you service? All that fun stuff. Sure, sure. I am Jasmine Glasgow. I am the broker co-owner of Maritime Mortgage Corp. We are a small mortgage broker company in the south shore of Massachusetts, but we serve where we live and where we travel and where we have fun. So we're Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and for some reason, Florida. Um, my <laughs> NMLS number, which I must say is 2708 and individually at 16226. Getting all the fun compliance stuff out of the way. We are moving our new office to Rockland in Massachusetts. So we'll be a short, uh, you know, skipping a jump for most neighbors. And when we are open, I'll let people know and they can swing on by. We love driving. Happens. Yeah. Are you going to have a party? Because if so, I, I want to be invited. <laughs> you, you know we're going to have a party. I'm right now looking for a DJ. And um, it's taking up a considerable amount of time when I should probably just use my son. Well, you mentioned Florida. I do know a DJ. He just happens to live in Florida. <laughs> I don't know how I that would work for room. you. <laughs> we can all just have the party in Florida. No big deal. 
Um, I love it. New yeah. office. Let's go to a different state. Yeah. Um, but, I'll head up that one for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll, be the, I, I'll be the friendly face of the receptionist as you walk in the door. Welcome to Maritime Mortgage. <laughs> Please sign in. That was my Florida job during edition. COVID, getting everybody to sign into open houses. Um, but... I know a lot of people already know this, um, but I will, uh, I'll say it every day until my last breath. Uh, Jasmine and her team over at Maritime Mortgage helped me personally purchase my first home, has helped several agents even purchase homes for themselves, and helped Boston Connect and Sharon um, and Mark purchase our building here. And just, we, we love you guys, and we trust you guys, and we trust you not only with our stuff, mm-hmm. but with, with our clients' Um, purchases as well. So I would have used her when we bought our house um, 31 years ago, but she was probably, probably in diapers. Yeah, she was probably <laughs> one or something. I will have you know, I was definitely doing toddler things. <laughs> probably out of diapers, yeah, just fun. out of diapers. But um, yeah, she's actually yeah. currently in the process of uh, she's done pre-approvals for my daughter Casey. Nice, uh, and she is currently you know working on something with Mackenzie. So nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm trying to infiltrate the Boston Connect family. It's what yeah. he's trying to help. Yeah, <laughs> we are family. We are family. And do we have uh, the one and only Tim in studio this morning? I believe we do. Why, yes, you do. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, that's um, a great song. I, I thought for sure as soon as I said it that you well, would have Hold on, hold on. Wait one sec. He's getting cute one up. One yeah. sec right here. Here you go. Liven everybody up. Yeah, yeah. liven everybody up. We are family. Little chair dance happening here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Us too. So we are live on Facebook as well. So if anybody wants to see what our studio looks like here at Boston Connect Real Estate, of course, Boston Connect Real Estate, along with the McNamara Horton Group, are the sponsors of this show, Talk Real Estate Roundtable, here this morning on WATD. One other thing I want to do this morning to get all this fun stuff out of the way is I want to say hello to Nanu, a.k.a. my dad. He is over at um, Wingate, Silver uh, Silver Lake uh, in Kingston. So I want to say hello to him and all of his friends that are listening in this morning. So hello to uh, to Wingate. Hello to Wingate. And to Nanu. And to Nanu. Yeah. So, all right, this is a good topic. We don't want to waste any time. Uh, you have the opportunity to call in and text in to the studio, and Tim will get you right over to us, 781-837-4900, 781-837-4900. Hopefully, you listen to our intro and you have a notebook and a pen to take good notes. We are also on Facebook Live, so you can go to Boston Connect Real Estate on Facebook, and you will see us there. And then, of course, I have some of my friends from uh, Clubhouse who are joining me live this morning as well and that's uh, how Jasmine is coming to me via um, via Clubhouse so anybody there I see Jennifer you have that green bean too so if you could just help uh, keep track of people who want to come in and maybe ask questions that would be awesome if you could help and there you go let's start yeah there we go um, Jasmine again thank you very much for joining us today we love when you're on because it's so educational and like you said you are a nerd with numbers and um, I know personally how how much you helped me purchase my house and sort of get me on the right track um, to getting to the closing table. So um, today we're going to be talking about credit scores and mortgages. So who else would we invite but you? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And this is a great topic because first, a lot of people feel like if they have a lower credit score, it's game over. They can't do anything. They, They absolutely have to wait. And that's not true, but we want to plan for higher credit scores because it does make a huge impact, not only in the upfront costs of a mortgage, but in the monthly costs of mortgage. So we do have alternatives and, you know, FHA loan programs go down as low as 500. There is also, you know, non-QM products, which are qualified mortgage, non-qualified mortgage products. I don't like to play in that game but there, we have you know situations and we can find homes for for these type of loans like we had a purse you know a client and she lost her husband then her house then her child all in a span oh, of two wow. years five years ago yeah and credit wasn't on her mind at all 
no. um, if you can imagine. Yeah. And she was going through the worst period of her life. And she came to us completely ready to buy a house, had the funds to do it. Um, her rent was out of control because of her credit. I think it was like $4,800 oh, wow. in the South Shore for How a one bedroom. Can I just and stop she, at you for one second? Because yeah. that story that you just told, you know, there are times when we're walking around life and we're like, uh, I got to do this. I got to do that and whatever. You know what? I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. And that was such a really good example that that woman got up every single day and still went at it. So congratulations to her for your client. I just think that that's just inspirational. So thank you for sharing that. Mm. Yeah. She's and, and, you know, we, we meet people and we come across people like this. All like all too frequently. And let me stop happens. again. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. It's almost like you're sitting at my coffee table here with me this morning. But you know what, Jasmine? I think that's what fuels you. I think that those situations and seeing deep into the person is what fuels you. You know, it isn't like, oh, this is going to be like a challenge because I can make it work and it's tough. I think what fuels you is people's stories. And I know that that's what fuels a lot of us here at Boston Connect Real yeah. Estate. Yeah. Oh, if you can't do it for your people, for your neighbors, for your yeah. community, mm -hmm. you're going to be short-lived in this industry, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. there, I think there's, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in the, the fun luxury that can come with real estate. But when you get down into the dirt of it, you're essentially helping people, you know, find where they sleep. And, you know, background, a little background on me. I have had some housing insecurity in the past. I won't go too deep in that. So to me, it really resonates. And for someone like, you know, for my client, uh, who I didn't ask permission to speak her name, so, so I won't, but um, she she's one of those people who you're like, I will fight to the end for you. Um, you know, you get up out of bed every day when I couldn't imagine doing that myself. And so you have to, you have to keep the people in mind. And so her score was under 500. There was no FHA product. Um, but we found a home for it because it made sense. Otherwise you go look at the history before, look at the history after this is the blip of life. And so while credit scores are not the, the you know the end of the road there and a lot of people will do a quick google and they'll say okay well my score is too low you know and despite the, the circumstances you know no one's going to accept me and, and that's not true so i want to start off by saying there's there are ways around you know just that the low credit score you know requirement but we want to see people in the high credit score for for a few reasons um i'll start off with at the closing table one thing that dictates um, conventional interest rates, and I'm kind of pulling back the curtain here a little bit, is what's called loan level pricing adjustments. And these are adjustments created by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, determined by your credit score, the loan to value, so your down payment. Um, and then there are other adjustments like loan features. So the type of property, whether it's a condo, a single family, multifamily, and all of these, if you're looking at this chart, have different credit lines and have different loan to value. So if you're putting down a small down payment and also have a credit score um, that is kind of in the lower range, so say like, you know, 620 versus 780, for a $300,000 loan amount, which is, um, I'm literally looking at a file of my clients, um, over two years, they approved their credit score from, uh, 630, 632 to 795. And wow. the mortgage insurance on, oh no, and complete, we'll go into that too, but, um, their monthly expenses on just mortgage insurance alone is going to be $230 less. But the big thing comes at the closing table. Their points just based on one loan level pricing adjustment is going to be $4,900 cheaper. Mm -hmm. So to get the same interest rate with the same down payment because of just one credit score, just one number, one factor in the many, many numbers we work with is going to save them thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at credit scores, the impact isn't just, can I do it? Because yeah, you know, we can usually find a way if all the other things look right and we just have credit as, as a barrier, we can usually find a way to do it. But how accessible is that? Does everyone have an extra $4,000? Everything is so expensive mm. already to start with, right? People are having a hard time just making ends meet. So saving, whenever I see people and they're like, oh man, I only have $12,000. I'm like, you worked two different jobs 
you took care of your children, you took care of your family, you took care of these bills because this rent doesn't go away while you're saving and you saved $12,000. Be proud of yourself. Yeah. I have so many people who break, you know, beat themselves up and I'm going, you should be absolutely giving yourself a, a pat on the back. It's not easy to save money. And so it's very important when we're looking at every way we can do it. Credit score is a big factor. Yeah. I want to take a breath here. To, to yeah, leave take, guys a breath, to take a breath because <laughs> I, and I'll just say, I mean, we had that conversation. I'll be transparent. We had that conversation when I was going through my buying process. You know, I walked into your office not thinking that I was ever going to be able to buy a house. And you, you had to, you know, t- tell me, this you you are exactly where you should be like you should be proud of the money that you've saved you should be proud of you know doing this this and this and I just never thought of it that way I just thought of like okay yeah I'm just working and working and saving and you know I I have a goal but I don't know if I'll ever get there but it was my conversation with you Jasmine that you were like no like you're at your goal let's let's get you to the finish line um, but yeah, you, you were the one who were like, it was like, you gotta, you gotta be proud of yourself for being where you at. And then, you know, obviously I had Sharon and Mary in my corner as well, mm-hmm. and, you know, telling me, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe it is true. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it is hard to save money. It is so hard to save money, you know? So especially well, yeah, when you're talking about those rents, right? I mean, that was an astronomical rent at $4,800 a month. But, you know, I know, you know, Jasmine, you've worked with my daughter, you know, Casey, who lives in the city. And, you know, even though she has a good income, she also has a very high rent for living in the South End. You know, she has to be that accessible to the Peru so she can get back and forth to work because of the long hours that she does. But, it's still hard to save, live life, and yeah. enjoy it to purchase, then try to purchase something in the South End, by the way, you know? So it gets a little, it gets difficult. Oh, the bar is high. The bar is high there. And the standard that people put themselves to beyond what underwriting does is, you know, probably a whole other topic. But one real big, you know, cornerstone there and and especially in the emotional security because so much of this is about emotions so much of home buying is Mm -hmm. about the emotions of it um it's a it's a big financial undertaking sure but you also have to feel confident and comfortable making this decision and so many people tie their their self-worth to how they look on paper you know so Mm -hmm. many people believe that 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 income number that that credit score is the determining factor in who they are and you know, it's almost always in a negative way. I don't have people who have got, you know, really great credit scores going, yeah, you see this? Look how awesome I am. I usually have people who have struggled with credit and they're like, I know I, you know, I know I'm not great, but like, do you think you can help? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take a look at the story behind the credit because that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Credit scores are telling a story um they're they're telling people who are going to lend whether it's for an auto loan for a credit card for a personal or for a mortgage your ability not your ability but your willingness to repay loans and sometimes things just come up in life and you're going to have to get through a season of your life instead of excelling past it right or you know taking advantage of it and we all have those seasons and so when you're thinking about the factors the biggest factor in your credit score is going to be your payment history so if i can put anybody like if i can give you any advice anything you take away from this you should be on automatic payments now you should be looking at your bills everybody should be looking at your credit card statements you don't have to do it online but you need to be going through your transactions to ensure you don't have one three dollar charge that happens every 10 days that just gets right by you and you know someone's skimming from your account you need to make sure you're doing that but you should be on automatic payments because that's 35 percent of the weight of your credit score 35 percent is based on the on-time payments that you make on your on your debts and i have to ask a question right mm -hmm. here too or even just bring up like a story for me is and when you, if you're getting paper bills, always open them. Don't assume because you thought like you paid it off that it was. So I remember one time getting like something from Kohl's. I don't even remember, but I was like, I haven't been to Kohl's in forever, right? And I just wasn't opening it because I thought I didn't have. I, sometimes they'll just send them that say zero, right? Mm-hmm. So I just wasn't open it. I owed like. I want to say like $24.16 or something. It was something ridiculously low, but it was 
affecting my credit score huge. Yeah. It was crazy. So I say always open those regardless, but I do agree with even the minimum payment. Don't you agree? Because sometimes people will say, well, I don't want, I mean, not the minimum payment, but that's part of what I was going to say. That was so weird that my lips went ahead of my head. Um, But to do the automatic payments, if you're worried that you can't, I'm asking you if this is a good suggestion or not, because you're the expert. If you're, you know, maybe some people might be saying, well, I don't know if I'll exactly have, you know, if the bill was $500, I don't know if I'll have the $500 in my account or not. Is it recommended to do the, at minimally, the minimum payment on automatic? Exactly. That way you are making on-time payments and then you can go back and you can make additional payments to make sure that you're saving on the interest. But You're just securing your payment history and that 35% of your credit score by setting up automatic payments. And you need to watch it. You need to make sure that you're paying attention. Sometimes to set it and forget it makes us financially lazy, but we need to protect ourselves and it's a really easy tool. And you wanna make sure that you're setting up the automatic payment directly from each creditor. So if you've got a city card, you've got a a Chase, you've, you've got an Amex, you should be setting that up through those systems instead of saying doing a bill pay through your Bank of America checking account. You want to set it up with the creditors because as that minimum amount changes, you know, based on your your balance or based on the terms of service, it's going to cover what is actually ordered, not what is, you know, set up from your banking. And Mm -hmm. that goes for mortgages too. I can't tell you how many times people are going, you know, well, I have a fixed mortgage payment, so I just set it up from my bank. Well, your mortgage payment, if you have an escrow account, can fluctuate based on taxes and insurance. And so it's not always a fixed number. Um, It can change. It can fluctuate if you have that escrow account. And so setting up on your um, on your lender side, you know, whoever is servicing your mortgage is going to ensure the minimum amounts paid versus your bank. And that is a big payment history factor. If you have a late payment on a mortgage, it is going to impact you significantly more than any other account. Mm -hmm. One thing too, Jasmine, um, and honestly, I don't think that I got that idea on my own. You must've told me that at one point, but um, the other thing that you told me that I wasn't even really aware of, I was noticing that my credit score went down and I could not figure it out for the life of me. And I'm on a credit card with my father as well because I like pay all his bills and if I have to buy something for him, you know what I mean? Like, Mm so I'm a a user on his account. And then I also have, when the girls were in college, they were in undergrad. So that was several, several years ago. And they studied abroad. I got them, um, I got a visa, like a travel visa card. So it was in my name and they are additional users. Well, Casey loves using that card to this day because she likes the points and everything else she gets. I think it's a Bank of America too. So it was sort of connected to their Bank of America accounts when they went abroad. And, you know, I tell Casey all the time, I was like, Casey, like you have to make sure that you're paying the minimum. And she does. I mean, she's good about that. But, you know, life gets in the way sometimes too. But I didn't realize that, I can understand with that one because I was the lead on that one, right? And then they were extra pay, like the extra users. I am having a very difficult time talking today, so you might have to help me. Extra users, <laughs> extra users. I don't even know what I'm thinking about, but but the one with authorized my dad. Users, yeah. Okay, authorized users. There you go. But I didn't realize the one with my dad. Like, I don't look at it as my credit card or my credit score or my credit limits, but you told me that it actually does affect mine. Yes. So great point. So people need to understand when when they're either co-signing for loans or for any type of credit or they're doing, you know, adding authorized users. It's a great way to boost your children's credit, right? If you've got excellent credit you know, putting them onto an established card. And I'm, you got to check each credit card has a required uh, minimum age. Uh, but it's something I have did for my son very, very early. Um, every card that has a low balance, high limit, he's he is on as an authorized user. He does not get a credit card, but he's on those accounts and he has amazing credit at 19, right? Where no, most people don't. And it's because he's getting the benefits of that. But if he had that physical card and those cards were, were run up, well, that's going to impact my credit. So you need to understand that those authorized users are impacting not only your utilization on your cards, but also your responsibility to them. And when you co-sign on a loan, people think, well, I am they're the borrower. I'm just co-signing. I'm just also a guarantor here. When you sign 
and co-sign for something, especially a mortgage, you're not saying, you know, they owe it and I'm the backup or I'm good, you know, I'm letting you know I'm, that they're a good person. You both owe it. You both 100% owe the same debt. So you have a co-signer on a mortgage. You both 100% own that mortgage. And so co-signing is a great way to help people, but it's also something that needs to be done very scarcely and with extreme consideration. And the reason why they need a co-signer needs to be considered deeply as well, because if it's a season of life, that's one thing. But if it's, you know, like my son's going to need co-signing until he's probably 25, just because kids are having a harder time getting credit because the credit standards are tightening. And that is going to be what it is, student loans and whatnot. That's a good reason. But if you have someone who, you know, their their credit is trash because they don't make their rent payments, well, maybe you don't co-sign them on them for a mortgage because they're going to bring you down too. It's very important to know that. And so I don't know if we want to move on to the credit utilization part on that or... Can I ask just one other question though? Because it's interesting to me that you just said that it's more difficult for younger people to get credit cards and, and, and things like that right now. That's interesting to me because I, I don't know if times have shifted and things have changed, but I remember when my girls were in undergrad, every single day, if not every day, every other day, there would be a different credit card application or you've been pre-approved credit card in the mail for them every i could not believe first of all i didn't realize there were that many credit cards out there but they were getting them constantly and i just felt like this is sort of a way to sort of trap these young kids who are going into college and you know they they're studying so they're trying to make ends meet by buying books and doing things like that i mean is that something that isn't happening as much anymore sure so credit you know solicitations probably stayed just about the same but when the actual application kind of push to shove comes it is becoming harder um credit credit utilization in the country i mean we've tripped into the trillions now of credit card debt um and consumer debt and so credit is tightening across the board so while you know the discover cards and the store cards might be soliciting and being able to offer those products um if you go in for a personal loan as a young person you're gonna have a harder time getting that loan so credit tightening is really going to depend on the type of credit that they're applying for but the solicitations probably stayed at the same level they want to be top of mind they want to be that first card to open up but they're also going to be looking more strictly at their income and already open accounts now yeah that's mm-hmm. perfect. Jasmine, before we move on to sort of um, getting further into the nitty gritty, we're going to take a quick break. So you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Uh, you, you I went. wasn't going to take a break, but I was going to oh, do it. Just a reset. Oh, just a reset. okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know what your note meant. So yeah, Just a reset. So just to let everybody know who they're listening to and how they can call and text in. Okay, so you can call and text WATD at the studio, 781-837-4900. If you are watching us on Facebook, that phone number is also in the comments. So, um, yeah, you can follow us, Boston Connect Real Estate, on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. So Tim is in the Tim is in the Tim's studio. In the studio. <laughs> yeah. So you can call if you have any questions about this topic. Um, I think that we, this is a great opportunity to be asking Jasmine anything that you have about credit credit score. Maybe you're asking for, you know, your um, your children or something like that. And uh, as we do this reset, one thing I wanted to say that I didn't get a chance to say earlier is, you know, I I bet that credit score people get embarrassed if they did get into a situation. Maybe it was medical. Maybe it was just fine is a loss of a job or a hardship of some sort. I just want to let you know from the bottom of my heart, you are in the best hands with Jasmine. That's why I partner with her with everything that I do per real estate with my team, Mary Horton, as you know, and our team. Um, and that's why I allow her to come into my office and to give us trainings and to be on this radio show with you. So if you are listening this morning, I just want to let you know, don't ever let a past situation embarrass you to the point where it sort of disrupts your future because Jasmine will sit with you, she will counsel you, and she will get you on the path that you need to be. So I just wanted to make sure I said that. So again, we have Jasmine Glasgow from Maritime Mortgage with us. She is the broker and owner of Maritime Mortgage, and she is wonderful, fabulous, and great at all things she does. Can I just say, I can't pay for this type of advertising. I literally can't. (laughs) Well, you sort of do. You deal with us. (laughs) That's enough. (laughs) That's your payment. (laughs) it's so true and i talked about it a little bit earlier people tie their people tie their self-worth to their credit score and only when it's negative and listen 
everybody has been there. Everyone has had some sort of credit something. Either they didn't know what the credit score was, they thought it was really good and it wasn't, there was something that popped up, or there was something that they're hiding from. But I'm going to tell you, the, the number one mistake I see is people hide from it. People hide from the problem, and they just say, I don't know what to do, and so I'm just not going to do anything, and that is not the right way. So let's continue going through what makes up a credit score, and I'm gonna, I want to dive into um, what you should be doing about things that are negative on your credit. Um, so we've talked about first the 35% um, of the credit score is made up of your payment history. So on-time payments, first thing you do, set up minimum payment requirements just to ensure that you're meeting that requirement. You, you don't have any late payments. That's really just bottom line. The next part is your, your balance, so the amount owed. And now this is what's called your credit utilization ratio. A little bit of math here. And a lot of people will think that it is, well, I have a lot of my cards are, are paid off. Well, it goes back by the average of the credit cards, and they're going to take out those cards with no balances, too. So sometimes people will, will pay off a card, and it actually will hurt them because that card might have a huge limit, and it's no longer in the calculation, or it's, it's weighing in way less. And so if you have three credit cards, and, and between them, the balance is 20000 but your, your utilization or your limit is 100,000, then you're only going to be at a 20% credit utilization. But if you pay off the one that has the highest limit, say one of those cards was 75,000, and you pay that card off, and now you've got 15,000 to 25,000, your limit's gone up, your credit utilization ratio has gone up significantly. So looking at the balance of all of your cards with balances um, versus your credit limits is important. You should also know your credit limits. Um, a lot of people will, will reject the automatic increase in credit limit because they feel like they can't, you know, responsibly handle that. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, but you should take that credit util yeah, credit limit increase just if you're building your credit so you have that better balance. And so that is another 30%. So 65% is how much credit you're using and are you making on-time payments? Now, I will say that under the new FICO 10 model, which was announced in 2020, um, has been pretty much put into play most of 2023 and will become the main, um, you know, the, the main um, FICO score um, algorithm by, I believe, the end of the summer. If you've got things like personal loans, if you've got um, you know accounts that you leave revolving balances on, it's going to hurt you a little bit more under this new algorithm than it previously had. What they're looking at now, especially with you know the credit card debt and the you know consumer debt in the trillions, they're looking to see are you paying off your cards monthly, and if you are doing that, um, you're a lower credit risk. Now, if you're always having a revolving balance and you're flowing that over and over, they're going to be weighing that a little bit stronger and going, is this person having a hard time? Are they slipping behind? And again, we talked about seasons in life. It's okay to maintain a balance, but watch that interest. I see people hanging on to three and a half percent interest rates um, on a two hundred. $20,000 mortgage when they've got over $150,000 in credit card debt that's between 25 and 35% interest. <sighs> and it's really hard to get out from underneath that. Is it really so, hard? Is it, is it actually possible? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's having $150,000 worth of debt at 25%. I mean, what about people who like... Is it recommended? Because I don't, P.S., WATD listeners and anybody else in the Facebook world or Clubhouse, I am not giving suggestions here. I'm asking questions. <laughs> so is it recommended to bop around? Like, you know, like you get a lot of times you get in the mail or you can see online like 0% financing for a 0% interest for like six months or something. Does it make sense to try to bring one balance from a high card to a low card? Or is that disrupting your, your credit score? Well, it's all going to fall into your utilization, right? So I wouldn't pay off that card with a high balance, but it's going to all play into that ratio. So if you're moving it from a high interest to say you have a 0% interest promotion, um, that's only going to allow you to get ahead. But you can't take that and go, all right, well, I was making $700 a month payments, and now that I've got zero interest, the minimum payment's $200, I'm just going to do that. No, you need to get you need to use that zero interest time period to pay off that debt. That yeah, is okay. the... 
All right, yeah, that's that, what I was, you know, if you continue to use the amount. But do, do you think most, well, I guess people who are most motivated to get their credit score cleaned up would stay on purpose with that, all right? So, like, I was paying 700 Now that I only owe 200 I'm still going to pay 700 Yes, and this is where having a budget is hugely important. So I told you a lot of people will hide from this. The very first step um, when we have someone with, you know, a credit challenges. Um, we're we're not going through the report first thing and kind of creating a plan um, until they've done a budget. And I need people to be honest with themselves. How much are you spending on the nightclubs? How much are you spending on clothing? How much are you spending going out to eat? You know, it's not just the things that I see on the credit report. What does it look like in your life? How does your your charges versus your income, what does it look like at the end of the mm-hmm. day for you? Mm-hmm. Um, because if you don't have that budget, it's not real. Yeah. Jasmine, it sounds like we have a caller. Tim, who do we yes, have on the line? Yes, we do. We have the lovely Patricia in Lowell. Patricia in Lowell. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Patricia. How are you? Good morning, everyone. You know, I have to, I, I've been seeing the effects of drugs, what happens, and I've worked in the field um, 30 years. You know, and the things that go on with um, mental health and go on and on and on. But I have to bring up a, 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 a point. And I hear everybody talking about, you know, the legalization of marijuana and how much money they can make from the sales and what have you and what have you. But I have to look at another side of this, okay? The other side of it is no one has talking about what the costs have been not just the numbers but the police calls the um aggravation that people have to go under because of the drug situation and we can blame everything on the borders but we've always had drug problems cross country and i'm not saying that that has anything not that doesn't have anything to do with it because i'm sure it does but what i have to say is what is the cost, okay? People are saying, yeah, we're making money from the tax money from marijuana. But what is the cost for the insanity that people are going through? Because once you legalize something like marijuana, the next thing you know, it's going to be, well, if I can have marijuana, I can have this and I can have that because they don't know what I'm doing. And the other part of it is the, uh, the, uh, the police across this country because of drugs and what have you and everybody's saying, oh, yeah, we're making money. How much is it costing in hospital bills that taxpayers have to pay because people are getting hauled off to the hospital? The court charges, the officers getting getting hit and, and, and smacked because they're trying Trying to do a job, what is the financial cost, not only the emotional cost and the physical cost, but what is the cost dollar-wise? People are thinking, oh yeah, we're making that money. You know, but so can money I, yeah, I just want to interrupt just for one second, I'm ahead. sorry. <clears throat> Was there like a specific question about like that whole topic though that brings us back to yeah, the I mortgages and the credit scores? About closing things, but we've, this country has paid out so much money and other costs to make a little bit on drugs, marijuana. It is a drug. Let's let's talk about it. No, I I really can't talk about marijuana right now. I'm sorry to interrupt that part of it. It's just that we have a special guest with us today, Jasmine Glasgow. So I just want to know, like, does, is there like a a direct question that you have that relates to, you know, getting your credit score up and being able to, you know, get a mortgage loan and purchasing a home? Yeah, you're on another subject after the news, but you guys, um, I didn't want to call right in the middle of uh, the end of your thing because I knew you were going on break. But anyway, I have to say, we have to figure that we have to figure out what the cost is these days. Period. I think that that's sort of a very valid point, and I think you know talking to the people at the top at the state house might be a great place to start and figure all that out. Um, oh, I've tried calling for the last um, month. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I know. All right, so if phone. you want to leave okay. your number, if you want to leave your number with Tim, our producer over at WATD, I hate to interrupt, and I, I'm trying not to you know, no, 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 cut you off. It's just that I only have 15 minutes left with this interrupt. special guest. Yeah, it's not an interruption. Really it's just sort of a little bump. But if you want to leave your number with Tim, I'm happy to have this conversation with you offline, and maybe there are some people that I know in my life, like state reps and different people. Uh, you know, there's mm-hmm. elections that are going to be going on, so those might be the people that you want to get in their ear if this is something that's passionate to you. But for right now, I just want to get back over to Jasmine Glasgow yes, from Maritime you, Mortgage. Yes. And I appreciate day, that. You too. Weekend. Okay. Bye-bye now. So well, Patricia brings up a great point okay. about medical expenses and mm-hmm. seasons in people's lives when they're not participating in credit events. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that we see a lot for, you know, people who have, you know, been away for whatever reason, like hospitalized for some period of time, and they're coming out with a lot of medical expenses, and it's going on their credit as either collections, charge-offs, medical collections, and the way that reports is hugely important, too. And so a lot of people will hide, just to circle us all the way back, they will specifically hide for medical collections. And oftentimes, those are the easiest things to clean up. Yeah. Um, those are the easiest things because you are able to reach out to your insurance and get everything confirmed. A lot of times it's inaccurate. I myself had um, a hospital bill that included um, two ambulance charges. Apparently, I was transported to the hospital t- by two different ambulances <laughs> for the same thing when my husband drove me. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, they That's they so interesting. To- I cannot believe. I mean, again, I know that they have to, you know, it's expensive to run run those, you know, but I just actually got the hospital, uh, the ambulance bill for my dad. Um, and of course, he has insurance. So, you know, the deductible for him is $150. But when I looked at all the costs, they charge by miles. So it was like $2,500 for an ambulance ride from Pembroke to uh, South Shore Hospital. So you can imagine for people who don't have insurance and they don't have the ability, you know, and let's face it, there are a lot of people right now, Jasmine, that are living paycheck to paycheck. So this just seems astronomical to them, but they're in good hands with you giving us these top tips on how you can, you know, manage your credit score. Maybe you're not buying a home today, but who knows what tomorrow brings, right? Yeah. Jasmine will put you on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, sorry, Jasmine. I didn't Go ahead, Jasmine. What's next? Because we have 10 minutes left. So new credit was another thing that we had brought up is like, you know, you're getting all these promotional balances. That's going to be 10% of the weight. Um, And then another 15% is going to be the credit mix. So do you have only consumer credit cards? You know, do you you just have those store credit cards? Do you have a good mix of personal loans, auto loans, credit cards? Um, And the algorithm's changing. Right now, it is taking more effects. Like you can report, um, you know, utility expenses and and other things that aren't so, you know, interest heavy, and and you're able to get a credit score faster too. One of the models um, previously it was six months of credit reporting to get a score, and now um, one of the models is only counting one month. Um, to, in order to get a score, which is great for some people who have always used cash but now need a credit score to make some moves. So what do you say to people who, you know, first of all, we have to spend some time. You know what? I just, I have to have you back. So maybe we can bump whatever next week is if you have time, because I just don't think we're going to have time to finish all of this. Or maybe Tuesday night. I don't know what we have planned for that night either, because one of the things I want to is not only do I want you to help people figure out how they can get their credit score up so they can purchase a home. I definitely want to have a conversation with you another time on what you shouldn't do once you're in the pre-approval process. And it, what made me think uh, of yeah. that is every time I go into Home Goods and I'm walking out the door, they're saying, oh, you would be a really good candidate to sign up for our, you know, our credit card, you know, for our credit card. And you could say 5% today. I know yeah. it's a contest that you're having, well, by the when way. When I used to work at TJ Maxx when I was in high school, we, we were like required, I was a teenager, required to like ask every single person to push those credit cards. Yeah, so. <laughs> and I didn't know, I didn't know anything about them. They just make it so easy, right? So I would say Say don't do that, right? Oh, yeah, please don't. I know, I know it's so great to save 10% that one time. Do not open store credit cards. And, I, you know, you open the door here. Please don't rage quit. Don't rage quit during the, the pre-approval process. That is the number one thing <laughs> don't I what? deal with. Rage quit. Like, Ra- oh, rage like quit. you have a bad day and you're like, I quit. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. You can love your manager for at least a couple more weeks. Yeah. Please stay. Okay. Um, because it is, it's, 
you know, different topic, but the hiring is not the same as it was in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, it is taking people longer to get jobs and it's it's a little bit harder there. And when you're talking about people living paycheck to paycheck and managing their credit, managing their bills, um, like I said, it can get overwhelming and daunting. We gotta start with the basics. Yeah, can we save and, that? I wanna do, can we, can you join us next week? I don't even know what we yeah, have. Yeah, well, Tuesday's fine. We can bump Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday or Saturday. Well, Jasmine, can you? Yeah, I can live there. That's fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because I, I definitely want to have a whole nother conversation about yeah. that. And I think it makes sense to do it back to back. So let's just stick on right now, like best ways to improve your credit score or to keep your credit score where it is. Because I just looked at mine and I'm sort of pissed. I'm not going to lie. Like, and I don't even know why it keeps on going down. Oh, well, can, I'm, can I make a note? So after I bought my house, my credit score went down. Why yeah, is that? That makes sense because you have a Because I have more. I have more debt. I know. But I was like, <laughs> what? New debt. Yeah, I have new debt. <clears throat> but I was like, hello. Mm-hmm. I, I'm doing good. <laughs> Why isn't this reflecting it? <clears throat> All right. Go ahead, Jazz. With time, that, though, will help. That'll help the utilization. And with time, that'll no longer be a, a not only utilization, a credit mix. So now you have a mortgage in, in the mix with the other credit debt. Um, and the new algorithm, we're going to have to dive in uh, a little deeper on that on Tuesday because the new algorithm is taking into account new credit way heavier. And personal loans, it kind of didn't really matter what type of credit was new. But things like personal loans are having a specific impact um, to the credit. They're really Really looking at um, people as a whole, they're diving in deeper to the story that is credit and trying to determine what that means for you and your ability or your willingness to repay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. That j- bell just tells us that there's 10 minutes left just to keep us on track. Uh, that helps my ADD. So you can keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do you guys have kitty. any? <laughs> What's that? Do you I have said, oh, any... look at the kitty. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Go ahead, Jasmine. Do you have any questions on Um, what I do so far? So I don't have any questions. Um, If you have any questions and you're listening to us this morning on WATD, you can also text in your question, 781-837-4900. You can call in again uh, to Tim and he will pipe you through. I'm just going to check in with our ladies and I don't think we have any gentlemen that are joining us right now on Clubhouse. So to all our Clubhouse friends, does anybody have any questions for Jasmine on this topic? It's such a great opportunity and such a great topic so do any of you up on stage have a question for her Hmm. i'll I'll add a question it's jennifer in austin okay jennifer yes so austin let everybody let my listeners here know what areas you service as a real estate she's a full-time real estate agent in austin uh jennifer is one of the best of the best that's why i let her be up on my stage here with us uh so if you are thinking about moving to the austin area she'll tell you specifically you can always get in touch with me and i can refer her right over uh refer you right over to her so uh jennifer start with that real quick and then your question I think you covered it, but my (laughs) my name is Jennifer Kidman. I am a realtor in Austin, Texas. I always say Austin, Texas, so nobody from Boston thinks I'm from Boston. (laughs) Boston. Uh, So uh, my question is this, for those who are working on their credit, Jasmine, is it helpful if you have a weekly or biweekly payment to your credit card as it pertains to writing down just like you do if you do a mortgage payment twice a month? Great question. Okay, so that that covers two two different things. Um, First, anything that's going to lower your balance throughout, do it. Because you don't know typically when your your balance is updated to the credit agency, and so your one time a month payment might not line up when it's actually you know that data is collected and then reported back. So paying twice is not only going to make sure that you meet that minimum payment; it's also going to help you stay on track with the loan balance, and it also might help you catch that following month that is the reporting date from the creditor to the credit agency. So Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion they do they they report this stuff monthly, and it's not on your due date. Um, But the second thing on the making the the, um, bi-weekly mortgage payment, if your mortgage payment is not set up for bi-weekly mortgages, like it it is a specific thing, um, you should be making one extra payment a year by taking the payment amount, if it's a $1,200 payment, dividing it by 12 and adding an extra $100 a month. And here's why. Unless you're paying on the 1st and the 14th and paying that way, um, the credit, the, the lower, the is collecting that first half payment, keeping it to the account, and they're not applying your mortgage payment totally to your account 
in most circumstances until they receive the full payment. It's part of your loan repayment terms. So you're you're doing this with the guys that there's 26 biweekly um, biweekly periods in a year. And so by paying biweekly, you can make 13 payments instead of paying once a month, which would be 12 payments, which would shave off seven years off a 30-year mortgage, which is fantastic. But I have seen so many people shoot themselves in the foot because they're making a payment on the 2nd and on the 16th, and they're getting hit with a late fee. Um, each month and while it's not being reported late to their credit because that would mean um, you know April's payment would need to be received in May they're getting a late fee and sometimes the creditor is not applying it because the late fee wasn't collected and so they will have a late payment and so be very careful about the bi-weekly mortgage payment unless both payments are being collected before the 15th so that you're avoiding a late fee um, and that you are um, having the whole payment applied um, like i said an easier way is just to take your mortgage payment whatever that number is 1200 it's not really reasonable anymore uh, but say it's 3200 divide that by 12 and add that 267 dollar payment monthly to principal nice hmm, that's a good idea that is a good idea did someone write down that math well <laughs> well one of the new things that we're doing by the way too is we're taking every one of our shows and um i think you worked on this while i was away yeah. in orlando uh with julia and she sent me one we're going to take every one of our shows and we're going to make it a flyer and giving the top tips for whatever we're talking about so say that math again real slow for us uh jasmine sure if you've got a 3200 dollars monthly mortgage payment if you take that that um, payment divided by 12, um, you can add $267 to each of your payments each month and apply it to principal. So instead of making a $3,200 payment each month, you would make a $3,467 payment. And you have to be sure to say that it's going towards principal, right? Yep, add it in the notes. Okay. Additional to principal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now it works the same if it goes into escrow, um, which is an account that's attached to your mortgage um, to pay your taxes and insurance. If it goes into that escrow account, that can also help buffer to ensure that there's no um, there's no issue there, and then it, it it'll get applied during the um, the escrow analysis. Okay. But it's better to go to principal each month. And what about um, so instead not just talking about mortgages? What about somebody who has high credit card debt? Is that does that make sense? As Jennifer had asked. To pay that yep, twice? As long as, they're, as long as they're both before the due date. Before the due date. Both before, before the, the due date. date. Okay. All right. Both before the due date. Yeah. Okay. I'm actively taking notes over here. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, no, but I'm excited that you're going to be here on Tuesday because I do have other questions. I feel like if I ask them right now, they would um, project um, the, the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we only have a couple minutes left, but Jasmine, I want to be able to give um, your contact information mm -hmm. now for any of our listeners. Um, we only have about three minutes left, so um, tell tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Sure. You can reach out to me at team, T-E-A-M, at maritimeloan.com. That's M-A-R-I-T-I-M-E-L-O-A-N.com. And my cell is 774-240-4667. Please do not spam me, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give your phone number one more time because you can text her at this number and then she can call you back. Yes, it's 774-240-4667. 4667. Again, Jasmine Glasgow with Maritime Mortgage. Perfect. All right. Any last mm -hmm. thoughts for you there? Because uh, we want to make sure we have one minute left to talk about some of our uh, open houses this weekend as well. Final I thoughts think we're for the final this seconds. Conversation. Yep. On, on Tuesday. Just join us for that because we're going to go deeper into this. There's so much. Yep. All yeah. right. So join us Tuesday at 615 to 7 p.m. And uh, we will be live here on WATD 95.9 FM, of course. Uh, so join us. We'll come back with Jasmine. And, you know, I have a feeling that we're going to ask her on Tuesday to follow us on, to come with us on Saturday. So <laughs> um, just join us every single yeah, show. <laughs> exactly. To my clubhouse uh, friends out there. Um, again, I want to say I just I went to Orlando. I was there last week uh, for a conference. Uh, I am uh, coached with uh, Tom Ferry and an elite it's elite coaching and I was with a bunch of women who I would definitely put in that elite category whether they were doing coaching with him as well or not. Uh, but does anybody uh, in Clubhouse have just like literally a five second, ten second comment, question, anything like that? 
and I'm going to take that as a no. So I just want to thank all the people that I do have uh, that are with us today on Clubhouse. And um, I have people from uh, throughout the nation, by the way. So if you are thinking about relocating to any of the areas like uh, Jennifer had spoken about earlier in uh, Austin, Texas, we have Rue, who's in Orlando. We have Megan, that's in Long Island. Uh, Jennifer, I'm not even sure where Jennifer is. So Jennifer, um, I'll have to find that out. Uh, Jessica, uh, but a bunch of other people. But if you're thinking about uh, relocating to anywhere in the country, I promise you I could find you the agent that is going to serve you the best. Open houses real quick. Yeah, the Grady team is going to be at 719 Ferry Street in Marshfield from 11 to 1230 today and tomorrow. That's on the market for 1.2999. And you can get in touch with them if you can't make that open house at 617-620-8484. Yeah, and then Sharon and Mary have Cushing Trails in Cachisa to State. Yeah, so if you're looking for a new construction, you can find me and Mary, the McMara Horton Group over at Cushing Trails. You can use um, your GPS and do 486 Spring Street in Hanson. You'll find me, or you can go to uh, Matacomet uh, Road in uh, West Bridgewater, and Kristen will be there tomorrow. Mary's there today, so have a great day. Tim, thank you for all your time. With you, so let's make the most of this beautiful...